Hi everybody, I'm David Mitchell. I am here with two women pole vaulters, one that you probably know a lot about and one that you should know about. And we want to talk to them for a second. Stacey Bergila, two-time Olympian, Olympic gold medalist, pioneer in the sport, especially here in the U.S., but really in the world as well. Lacey Henderson, a Paralympic athlete, one, the only woman we understand right now competing in the pole vault and the world record holder by virtue of that. And she just put on part of an exhibition here at the Simplot Games 2013. So, Stacy, first of all, can you just tell us a little bit of your perspective? What's it like now that you're pulling away, you're coaching more? Uh, what's your looking back retrospect of what it was like for you to be this pioneer in the sport? Well, gosh, sometimes I think, would it have been better if I, you know, brought to the sport 10 years later, or is it good to be the pioneer? Because I had to learn through a lot of obstacles what, what I should do and, and not do. And, you know, the only role models that I have were the men to watch their footage. And, you know, sometimes I think it would have been nice to have seen a woman because, you know, we, we have to attack things a little bit differently. We don't have the upper body strength that the men have. So we have to do a little bit different training. But, uh, Obviously, looking back and being the pioneer, it was uh, something I really didn't even know that I was doing, but I enjoyed doing the sport, and then, as obviously, as I got better in the sport, I kind of knew that that was the role, and I just wanted to be a good good advocate for the sport, because it's such a fun sport, and women can do it, and for so long, we've been told that we couldn't do it, because we didn't have the upper body strength to be able to withstand jumping over great heights, and so, to then be told no that I couldn't do it, kind of put that fire in my gut that said, you know what, I'm going to show you and, and, and prove you wrong, so yeah, it was you, a lot of fun. You certainly did that, Thank with, you. without a doubt, um, and now you're doing some coaching. I am, I moved back to Boise recently, and I'm working with the YMCA right now, and my hopes is to open up my own private facility soon, because I think there is a huge need for it up there. There's a lot of great kids in the area, and we just don't have a lot of indoor facility to be able to accommodate all the, all the training. And, uh, and I want to be able to provide that for the kids. That's awesome. And so now you're sitting right here next to what we can consider our next pioneer, a slightly different version in the Paralympic realm, Lacey Henderson. Lacey, tell us your story. Um, kind of similar with Stacey. Um, I had just been told, my dad was big into pole vaulting when he was in college. He went to the Olympic trials for pole vaulting. And um, he and I were talking. I grew up being a gymnast and doing cheerleading in high school and in college. Um, and so he was talking to me. He's like, you know, I don't think any amputees could ever learn to pole vault. They can't generate enough speed. Um, they don't have any knee drive. There's a lot of like the components that, are, that go into it that just make it impossible. And it's very similar to Stacy. I'm like, you know what? Like, I did gymnastics long enough. Like, I, I could probably do that. Like, I mean, <laughs> I could probably figure it out. So. Um, I, I was lucky in my career, right as I was graduating college, um, I started picking up pole vault, just kind of doing indoor meets. Um, and then there I started learning a little bit more about the Paralympics. So, I mean, at this point, I'm still just kind of in definite practice learning mode with pole vault, especially with sprinting. But it's just a whole brand new sport for me. But, um, you know, being, one, being the only woman right now in the world is it's just something that's kind of unbelievable every time you say it because it's just such a fun, incredible thing to do all the time and it's just, it's not impossible. I mean, you just have to work a little differently and find, you know, different ways of getting up there, but... Do you feel like a role model? Um, I guess. <laughs> do you think that way or do you think I, I just want to prove I can do I this? Kind of like Stacy said for her. I mean, at this point, I, I, at this point, I would love to be a role model because there's so many, especially, I mean, regardless of Paralympics, regardless of physical disabilities, just being a woman in sports is still kind of a hurdle to overcome um, and especially at the elite level and you know at Paralympics it's just a whole nother it's just a whole nother design I mean Oscar Pessori is running in the Olympics he, he was kind of the pioneer in that saying that people with physical disabilities you know we're just as capable as, as anybody with able body um, to, to be able to perform the same way and I mean it's you know there's there's definitely a little bit different adaptations but um I don't know, you know, I would like to continue going on with the sport and I'd like to be one of those pioneers and be a role model because it's fun and it's not impossible. Can, can you tell us a story of how you became to be an amputee? Yeah, definitely. When I was nine, I was diagnosed with a soft tissue sarcoma called synovial sarcoma. Um, and it was just a cancer in my knee. I was on experimental treatment for a while. Nothing was really working out. So um, we amputated. That was really the best option they gave us, especially I come from an athletic family. They were like, you know, we can save prosthetics, and that is the only way we'll be able to get you back out in sports. If you break a leg, you just get a new one. So it's really the best option. <laughs> That's awesome. So it's where, where exactly, where, um, where does I'm, your leg end and the prosthetic begin? I'm right about begin? six inches above the knee, so I've got okay. a mechanical knee that I run on and then a carbon fiber leg that I also run on as well. Okay. And then, um, and then for stay stuff, I wear microprocessors. 
so. Okay. I mean, I lost my leg 14 years ago, and it was right at the cusp of technology, and it's just been, oh, it's been a, not only an incredible time to be a female athlete, but to be an amputee, and just, you know, kind of grow up with technology. Okay, and what's your PR at this point? Um, right now, I'm at about 8.6 in practice, so, you know, this year I'd like to get 8.6 at a meet, and then just, you know, keep moving from there. Oh, that's wonderful. That's great. You know, I see you do you mentioned you had two different or three different types of no, prosthetics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one looks like a leg. I mean, it's, it matches your skin color. And the other one was the blade like we saw in the Olympics and stuff. So just for people who maybe didn't know what that technology was. Um, so what are, what are future plans for you in terms of vaulting? Um, well, future plans this year, I, I'm just trying to get out there. I'm going to be doing a couple more exhibitions, and I'm putting on a national clinic um, with a couple of other disabled athletes in the beginning of June um, in Edmond, Oklahoma, at the Endeavor Games. And then, hopefully, by July, I'll be on the World Championships team um, with USA and uh, Italy on France. And eventually, we're trying to get, you know, trying to get, you know, higher jumps and kind of get more buzz around. I'd love to exhibition at, at Rio and, and get more athletes involved in the Paralympics so that we can kind of make this more of an event. Yeah, that's terrific. So are there some websites, social media things where people can follow you and keep up with your story? Um, definitely. I mean, I've got a, got a Facebook, got a Twitter, doing the Instagram thing. I'm still, you know, I'm still rough around the edges on it, but... Um, All right, so uh, search for Lacey Henderson? Yes. You have E in your Lacey or no E? Yes, L-A-C-E-Y. Okay. All right, we're going to be looking for you. We're going to be following you, and we're going to have thousands of people seeing you now on the nationalscholastic.org site uh, and hoping to tell your story a little bit. So thank you both go very Rio, much. Go Rio, go Rio. Go Rio, all right. Go, go Lacey. <laughs> go Lacey.